Y'all, I have another perfume haul because I went shopping. It's that time of year, there are sales on, and we need to take advantage of the discounts. So I picked up a few fragrances. Everything in this haul today is a designer perfume fragrance. For the most part, we have one Arabian perfume here that I finally got my hands on. Y'all know what it is. And so let's get into what I picked up, what I think, were they worth my money? Did I make a few mistakes? Let's talk about it. <laughs> I'm Janique and I'm basically a perfume shopping expert at this point because I do it so much. I might as well be. And in today's video, I have seven fragrances to share with you today. Seven designer fragrances that I recently picked up, added to my collection, I've been wearing, I've been testing it out, and I want you to know what they give, if they're any good, if I'm enjoying them, if I have any regrets. Let's have a conversation about these because I have a few things to say. Do me a favor, subscribe, show me a little bit of love, like, comment, do all the things. You don't need to watch the video to do any of that I promise I make good points in this video Looks like I lost my favorite time. The first fragrance I want to talk about is one that I've been trying to add to my collection for months now and it's been non-stop sold out and there was nothing I could do about it. I could just cry about it and it is La Taffa's Nebraska. Look at those guys. So cute. It is so adorable and I'm in love. Now, luckily, this deserves the hype. I thought I would get it and it would be a little bit underwhelming because, I don't know, everybody seems to be on board but sometimes that happens and the fragrance shows up and it's not what you expect. I have one of those to come. Mm. This is not that though. This is vanilla, chocolate, sugar, tonka bean. There are some fruits and other things in here, but it's mostly a slightly spicy vanilla, tonka, heavy, rich, sweet fragrance that is very gourmand, very, very delicious. It's a very comforting scent. It's very much suited for cooler weather. It's a sweater weather kind of fragrance. So I don't know how much work it's gonna put in this summer, but for now, I'm enjoying it. I'm wearing it indoors today. Look at me go. And it is absolutely lovely. I'm happy this is not a disappointment. Now, word on the curb is that it is a dupe for Billie Eilish one. And I don't know if that is true because I haven't sprung for the Billie Eilish fragrance. It's on my list, but it's not far enough up the list that I've gone out of my way to get it. But if it is a dupe, then I need the other one as well. Like, honestly, truly. This is a lovely fragrance and it is worth the hype that it gets. If you love a gourmand, then this is a special one. This is La Taffa's Nebras. The shade that I just threw was because of this fragrance. Mm. <laughs> it is Philosophy's Fresh Cream Warm Cashmere. Now, don't come for me. Don't come for me. I know a lot of people love this fragrance and say the most wonderful things about it, that it is a beautiful, vanilla, sweet, cozy, delicious. I don't know if it's just on my skin, but it ain't doing very much. Like, it's there. I sort of get this combination of Lactronic, vibes with some vanilla a little bit of sandalwood that like really that's what it smells like to me the notes say it also has coconut and cashmere wood as well but for me it is so subtle it is so restrained it is barely there it is essentially a skin scent from the time that i spray it and for me that is like you trying to fight me out here like the fuck no no i need you to do better anyway so this is smells like it says it smells it smells like vanilla it smells a little like tonic it smells a little like sandalwood it brings that all together but it is on a scale of like sillage and power a two out of ten it is so pulled back it's for people who don't want to smell like anything right like it's for somebody who does not actually want to project fragrances and i wish i had known that like i guess it's the this is the the fragrance for the girls who love a clean girl aesthetic and doesn't they don't want to like overpower their neighbors with their fragrance i want to choke people out i want to choke people out this does not let me do that so right now it's going to bed it is wearing around the house and then respraying multiple times of day to top it up so i can smell something i'm not hating on this i'm not saying it smells bad i'm saying if you don't like a power scent if you don't like a beast mode scent this is not even beast mode this is not in the category of beast. if you don't like a normal level of power think everyday fragrance <laughs> just everyday think nebras 
think anything like that then this is scaled all the way back turned all the way back funny story i went to the store specifically to test this in person because i did not want to blind buy this because i've not had the most luck with philosophy fragrances they're just not made for me personally they all kind of underwhelm me truly but the reviews on this were so consistent that they were so fantastic that i just felt like i needed to test this out i go to the store and there is no tester for this one they have testers for everything else but not this and i go to a different store no testers i am like okay so they don't put out testers for this one if i want it i'm a half a blind buy it so i did and I tried it in store on paper and I was like, okay, maybe I'm just not getting the full energy of it. So I came home, doused myself down and it was the same. It's pretty, it's nice, but only you can smell it. Even if somebody was like on top of me, like leering over me, I, I wouldn't be able to guess that they could smell it either. It really just is a very, very extremely extremely intimate scent and that is not usually the energy i'm trying to give so will i repurchase this absolutely not will i enjoy it while i have it yes will i go through this bottle really really quickly given how subtle and soft it is probably so yeah fresh cream warm cashmere a pretty electronic vanilla fragrance for people who really don't want their fragrance you know moving outside of their personal space we staying on theme here look at me go this next one is similar to the last one described as a woody vanilla fragrance but this one haha <laughs> does it better it is roberto cavalli's edp and it's the flanker to the edp original that y'all i've talked about that one so much i won't i won't go on anymore this is called nera assoluto and it is a flanker to the original uh roberto cavalli edp so first of all the bottle the bottle is bottling <laughs> look i love these bottles so much even even this gold like leopard print Yes, I'm going to call it leopard. Leopard print, I'm in, I'm in love with. So I've talked at length multiple times about how much I love Roberta Cavalli EDP as a vanilla lover. I find it to be a phenomenal vanilla scent. It does not work on everybody's skin. I get reports in all the time that, yeah, it works on my clothing, but it doesn't work on my skin or it doesn't work on either for me. I've heard, I've heard it all. The original is this slightly powdery, not very powdery, slightly powdery, very heavy, sticky, winter rich vanilla fragrance that's heavy on the amber, heavy on the vanilla, heavy on the sweetness. It is lovely. I love it. And this is a flanker of that that ratchets up the dark wood. So this has ebony in it. So very heavy dark wood to sort of juxtapose against the vanilla. In this though, the vanilla isn't playing number one and the wood's playing number two. I'd say it's almost flipped. It's almost as if the, the woods are playing the, the primary position and the vanillas are playing a supporting role. Or there are co-stars in here depending on when you smell because it opens up a lot more vanilla -y. In the mid we have them playing supporting characters and in the base we have more of that heavy wood. So this is a vanilla that I wouldn't say is for all the vanilla lovers because if you don't love a heavy dark wood, and I don't love all the woods. I don't love oud, for example. I am not a fan of gayak wak wood, however you pronounce that. I'm not like a, the biggest fan of that either. But I do love ebony because it has like a smoky essence to it. It has like a little bit of airiness and heft and body and mystery and darkness to it. And I think with that creamy sweet vanilla that like Roberta Cavalli does so so well. I think the combination creates this really like dark, mysterious, sweet kind of sensual fragrance that I think is really really pretty and I absolutely love wearing. So if you are a little bit adventurous but you love vanillas, this is maybe a place to go. It's usually pretty affordable in the $30 to $50 range in that area because it is an older fragrance but absolutely love this one it is roberto cavalli nesso nero assoluto beautiful woody vanilla that does it way better than the last one i mentioned let's move on so since we're in gourmand territory because it, it seems as if i just picked up a bunch of gourmands <laughs> last month it just seems like i bought all the gourmands i didn't buy anything else i mean there are other things coming but jesus there's just so many of them okay let's talk about this next one right um it's dolce and gabbana is the one 
This is a lovely caramel, sticky caramel, heavy caramel fragrance that is extra, extra, extra. Can I say extra sweet? It is so, 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 so sweet. Here's the thing. This is a blind buy for me. The internet is decided and they're on the same page about how lovely this is if you love a... A, um, a caramel fragrance and the internet is not wrong about this this is a lovely caramel fragrance I am not going to disagree with that here's what I have to say do not crucify me here's what I have to say I went to Sephora doing a Sephora sale right and I tested I'd already bought this um, I blind bought like I said and I went and tested the only one too which is the flanker of this one in store I could have chewed this way. A vex. A vex. Why is nobody talking about the only one to? Why is nobody talking about the only one to? I'm talking to you. Why is nobody talking about the only one to? It is better. <laughs> um. Um. I. The only one too is so good, y'all. And they cost the same thing, and I bought this one instead. No, if I'd never smelled that one, I would be obsessed, right? Like I would be so is we, is we just like happy with what you have before, like going out and trying other things. Like I would be so happy with this. This is a vibe. This is sweet. This is jammy. This is like heavy and sticky and so nice. It's a great layering fragrance. And the other one's better. Mm. The other one is so good, y'all. What does the only one smell like? So it is really a very caramel forward fragrance, right? But it's almost this squeaky kind of thin caramel where it's very straightforward. It isn't trying to do something extra with the caramel. It's very sweet, crisp, straightforward caramel mixed with a little bit of iris and violet for a little bit of airiness and a little bit of powderiness. There is some coffee to add a bit of dimension, not a ton of coffee. But really what you're getting is if you want like more interesting caramel like than Prada candy for example that is what you're getting with the only one and it's a more intense caramel it is more in your face it is more like intensely sweet than you have with other caramel fragrances that try to distract away from some of the sweetness this leans heavy heavy into the sweetness right the only one too which is not the only one there's that only one intense which i have not tried which i don't know what that one gives but let me tell you what the only one too gives is so good y'all it adds ambergris to it so a little bit like of a tobacco kind of smell this kind of smokiness which i think is incredibly sexy it has amber as well to add a little bit of heft to the caramel like i said the, the caramel in the only one is a lot more straightforward it's a lot crisper it's a lot cleaner the one in the only one too has a lot more body to it. It's a lot heavier and the coffee is more in your face and it is more pronounced in that one. So it is not as much of a caramel fragrance. It's not as, as sweet as the original it pairs back the sweetness by adding in this darker coffee smell and adding this tobacco kind of smell that comes from the ambergris which i think just makes it a far more complex fragrance i do understand why given some of the elements why it is not as popular as the original but had i realized it would not have been a competition the moment i smell the only one too i wanted to fight somebody in the I was like how dare you how dare you be this good and a part of me is like do I need to have both in my collection probably not like there are things in my collection I could probably layer the only one with to give something similar to the only one to like the fragrance that I just mentioned the Roberta Cavalli uh Nero Asoluto but I'm still a little salty because Mm, I love the only one too so much that I just wish I had it instead even though I really do enjoy this one like it and loved it until I tried the flanker next one was on my wish list for a very long time because I saw one review one review that convinced many to have it I saw this review on TikTok and the next thing you knew it was like stuck at the back of my mind that the next time it became available I would jump at the chance to buy it and it did become available eventually and this is a uh, gourmand fragrance that's heading in the fruity territory but still a very heavy gourmand fragrance and it is Lolita Land. Look at that juice. That's what it smells like. <laughs> Now this has some notes that are a little controversial and not for everybody. So let me point out those out to begin with. 
it has a licorice in it it has peach in it it has a soapiness in the opening that can be slightly off-putting but in general this is an ultra ultra mm, ultra sweet fragrance that brings together all of this sugariness and sweetness together in a way that I think is ultra feminine, really complimentary, and I love to douse myself in it, and I think it's really, really nice, but it's not for everyone. I think the, the review made it seem like this would be a universally loved by fruity or gourmand lovers kind of fragrance, and I fundamentally disagree with that. Even though I do enjoy this one, I can see how it's not for everybody so let's talk about this one like i said when it first opens up you get an almost aldehydic opening with this very heavy soapiness which was very very unexpected for me because no one ever mentions it right that kind of sweet clawing but fresh at the same time smell that you can get with like really sweet dish soap or something that's what you get at the very opening it doesn't last very long it lasts for about five minutes and then it goes away you then have a collection of citrus you have like mandarin orange but it's not tart fresh crisp citrus it's very like almost like overripe fruit citrus like almost rotting fruit again i'm not just i'm not like taking anything away from it i'm not criticizing it because sometimes that's what you want your sweetness to have, but that's what it gives. That sort of initial opening moves from this sort of soapiness to this almost rotting fruit sweetness to it. It is intense and it is a lot. Then that sort of mellows out and we get this white peach that I think is very juicy and nice. But that white peach is balanced out by licorice and this candy smell that seems to contradict it. And I think it's kind of fun. We have other things in here like jasmine and lily of the valley and certain kinds of woods. But really what's playing off of each other is plum peach and licorice now that either sounds good to you or it really doesn't i know for myself i really really enjoy this fragrance it also has a little bit of booziness from a bellini note that i think is um it adds it makes it a little bit even more disconcerting this is not you know how sometimes you can think of like sweet fragrance is kind of basic and not doing very much this is not that kind of sweet fragrance that kind of a confusing sweet fragrance to me that it can easily get lost where you're like oh it's sweet so it must be basic it's not there's a lot happening here there's a lot working together here that i think make it really interesting but i also don't think it's necessarily mass appealing because some of those specific notes might be things that are just not up your alley like the booziness or the plum or the white peach or the licorice any of them it has some some rounding out elements like vanilla and some woods that kind of ground the fragrance but that licorice is really intense it's really pronounced that booziness is definitely there it does make it a little bit sparkly and a little bit fun and i really do enjoy this fragrance i enjoy having it in my collection i don't know when i'm gonna wear it this feels like a nighttime vacation kind of scent and i plan to try that out but it is um really fun and sweet and interesting funny story the nose behind this fresh fragrance is francis kirkjean of baccarat rouge 540 fame so yeah he's out here making lolita land so if that's something you're interested in from this is from uh, lolita lempica so if that's something you're interested in check it out um like i said i saw the reviews i thought it was going to be a very straightforward sweet fragrance that smelled like candy and a lot of ways it does it smells like licorice which is not the candy you think of that you might want but i really do enjoy it and you might as well or not it it could go either way with this one to be honest apparently this next one is also from the nose of francis kirkjean it is a flanker to burberry her it is burberry her adt hello y'all why didn't no one tell me how good this was because it's amazing let's talk about this one so when it comes to the first from the original everybody loves burberry her i'm not taking anything away from that it is just not a fragrance that is for me per se i have a lot of things that smell similar enough and that sort of powdery kick that it has is enough to turn me off a bit 
um, or to not make it my preference. It's the kind of fragrance that if somebody gifted it to me, I would be happy to wear it. I'd be excited to wear it. It'd be lovely. But um, in terms of picking it up myself for myself, it's not the one that I would go with. But this, on the other hand, different story. So I tested this in store, not expecting to be blown away. I was just trying a bunch of different fragrances. And I was so blown away by this, I picked it up immediately. I didn't even, I didn't even to think about it. So what is this fragrance? It is a strawberry fragrance. Oh my God, it's so good. It's strawberry, but it has a bit of a green kick to it. So it's not like an overripe, juicy strawberry. It has some of those red strawberry sweetness. It's that nuance to it, but it also has this like green freshness to it. That's really lovely. The primary floral note, one of the primary floral notes in here is Lily of the Valley, which gives green, green freshness that's really really pretty and i love how you have the sweetness the tartness and the freshness in this they come together beautifully and i think this is an underrated fragrance because the original the edp version is so beloved and people enjoy it so much no one pays attention to this and they really should this is a lovely lovely fragrance no the main floral note in this is peony and I've talked about what peony smells like to me and it really gives this sort of haziness to fragrance or what I call like a romantic filter over fragrances where everything feels a little softer and more blunted there are no real sharp edges it kind of rounds everything out without adding like the powderiness of iris or violet right so we get softness in the fragrance without the powderiness we get in the edp version and we also get a little bit more balance in the tartness and freshness that we get to juxtapose the fresh sweet strawberry i am telling you if you love a strawberry fragrance if you love a strawberry fragrance with like a green tart like tinge to it this is such a beautiful one i loved it the moment i smelled it and i've never looked back i really do think this is better than the original at least it is for me and i enjoy having it and it will be on my tray for the month of may because why it is a month that needs a good fresh fragrance and this fits the bill absolutely speaking of freshness yeah I went to the Sephora sale, like I said, and I tested out this fragrance in store and it nearly knocked me on my ass. It was so good. I loved it so much. I was like, I could cry right now. This is so good. And it was sold out in store and online. And then last weekend I walked into Rexall and there it was, and it was cheaper in Rexall than it was in Sephora. Hello. The universe was looking out for me. It is this guy. It's Dolce and Gabbana's Limparatrice 3. Y'all, y'all, y'all. Mm. You need to know about this. This is a bright, fresh, citrusy, slightly green fragrance that screams height of summer to me. I sprayed this on and I was like, yes. It has like this sourness, this tartness to it that isn't for everybody. But if you love a really bright, fresh fragrance for peak summer days, this is it, y'all. You know what it's like? You know what it's like? You know what it's like? It's kind of like light blue from Dolce & Gabbana. They do those citrus fragrances so well, y'all. They really, really, really do. Now I'm looking at my haul. I did get a few Dolce & Gabbana fragrances, didn't I? Anyway limpire trees this, this whole hundred mil is coming on vacation with me because i deserve to smell like a ray of sunshine while i'm out on these vacation streets i just need this in my life this is so beautiful it is so bright it's so fresh it's so crisp i i'm really excited about this one i was a little heartbroken when i tested this and they didn't have it in stock it was like how can you set me up like that <laughs> to fall in love and then not have the fragrance and it feels like it's on a clock right because the height of summer doesn't last that long so i need it right now um and so this is going to be one of three summer fragrances for me i will do a video on my summer fragrances and my summer fragrance tray all of those things but this is in the number two spot the number one spot right now goes to Guerlain's mandarin basilic which i don't own i have like a little mini of this is a little mini guy look at it 
<laughs> it's a uh, mandarin basilic from girl on i don't have a full size bottle i plan to get one this is such a lovely fragrance for summer as well it smells like lemon sorbet to me love it and my other one my go-to my standard is shiseido zen it will be coming out for the summer as well but i will do a video on some of these summer fragrances i plan to be wearing or will be wearing or am wearing by the time i make that video and i'll talk a little bit about some of those fresher scents that are great for summer days but yeah that's everything that i picked up recently i will have more hauls to come because i stay buying these fragrances and i hope you stick around to check that video out thanks so much for being here today i really do appreciate you stopping by checking out my video on some of the fragrances i recently added to my collection i'm always excited to share because i'm a giver anyway if you enjoyed this video please like comment subscribe do all the things show me a little bit of love i would really appreciate it again i'm janique and i love a good perfume haul and i hope you enjoyed this one bye y'all see you then on the mind.